got the northern lights. Lights, lights. Baby, you just kick your feet up while I kick back. I roll one with you by my side. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bold, Black, and Addicted to Bravo, because I am Bold, Black, and Addicted to Bravo. I'm your host, Nimale, and this is a special bonus episode. Normally, we're talking about a specific topic and a mixture of all the housewives and reality shows on Bravo, but today we're focusing on one group, the Salt Lake City group. Uh, they just had their season reunion, and we want to talk about the reunion and also just the whole season. Um, I have some very awesome guests with awesome opinions. All these faces you've seen before because they are fantastic and I love having them back. Uh, so hi, everybody. Welcome. And I'm going to have you all take a chance to just introduce yourselves and tell everybody a little bit about you. Uh, Elle, I'll start with you since you are directly to my left. I'm Elle Marisaki. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok, Housewives and Chit Chat, chit chatting about all things Housewives. And then you can catch my show, Housewives Rewind, on Monsters and Critics on YouTube. Thank you. Uh, Mark? Hi, I'm Mark from the Pink Pop Box. You can find me over on Instagram. I do not play on the Twitter. And we have a podcast, um, the Pink Pop Box podcast. It's a pop culture podcast on anywhere you get your um, podcasts. And yes, I, I have opinions on Housewives. <laughs> yes, we can't wait to hear them. Stephanie? Hey, everyone. I'm Stephanie from Stephan Key TV. Find me on Instagram and TikTok. Sometimes I post videos, but I mainly just watch all of you and in the comments. <laughs> Thank you. Kristen? Hey, um, this is Chris, um, Kristen Dan, aka Philly Diva. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Philly Diva. Thanks to Elle, um, my TikTok is popping um, on Philly Diva on TikTok and my YouTube page is new. It's a couple of posts on there. And that's at the T H E E Philly Diva. Oh my goodness, it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Anila. Hi, I'm Nella over at Fix My Life Podcast, where I do tarot readings every Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Hawaii time, uh, because nobody ever remembers about Hawaii. Big love to our indigenous brothers and sisters out there holding it down. I am huge fans of every single person that is on my screen right now. So I'm so happy to be talking to you. I am a business consultant by day. So if you ever want to find me, uh, you can go to my Instagram page at M3, I-N-C-O-A-K, where I specialize in supporting low income women who had been socially and economically disadvantaged out in Oakland in the Bay Area, but we got Zoom, so I'm worldwide. Yes, and Robin. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Robin. I'm basically on Instagram. I started making videos at the beginning of the year about housewives and just other things and just trying to break um, some <laughs> some insecure moments that I might have by doing that. So thank you for having me. I'm a fan of all you guys do. I really, um, during the day, usually when I'm not thinking about housewives working on social justice issues and making content for a creative agency I work for out of Detroit, Redefinition Creative, it's also on Instagram, but I have been loving making my housewives videos. So if you want to hear them, you can follow me on Instagram right over there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And we love your videos too. Um, and your social justice one. It's all great. Uh, okay, so we are going to talk about Salt Lake City this last season. I always, when I do the reunions, I'm like, do I want to go event by event or person by person and talk about them in general? I think because right before we started this, there was some breaking news on one of the housewives. No, not Jen, surprisingly. Um, something just went down with Heather. So why don't we just start off by talking about Heather? Um, that way we can also put in the news in there. Um, actually, no, Mark, why don't you go ahead and tell us what just, what just broke with Heather? Okay. Well, there I was minding my business on the Instagram and one of my friends says, girl, have you heard what this person Shandy Vance to over on the TikTok post? And I said, no, what? And she sent it to me and it was Heather at her book signing last night for Bad Mormon. 
And she's sitting there and she goes, would you all like to know what happened to my eye? Cause we know you're not here for the book. And everybody freaks out in the audience and they're just like, oh my gosh, yes, we want to know what happened to the eye. She goes, well, I hit my eye on a shelf that was above the sink. It was an oddly placed shelf. And she said, and this is what got, this is what threw me over the edge. She told the audience that there was a contract that Bravo has with Airbnb and that she was told she could not bring that out to the public because that would hurt the contract with Airbnb. So she's trying to say that Bravo stifled her and told her to gaslight the entirety of the na- of all nations on her black eye and how she got it. And that's why a, a human resources investigation into the production company and all the castmates that probably cost hundreds of thousands of dollars took place because she hit her eye on a shelf in an Airbnb and she couldn't tell anybody. That's what she's trying to expect us all to believe now. Okay, and so, that's, that, so as we Tom was this. robbed and flipped his car down the uh, embankment and, and it was and snowing. It's snowing yeah. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it's giving all of that. I don't believe anything that comes out of Heather's mouth um, other than I'm a bad Mormon. That's it, period. That innocence. That's I don't it believe right anything there. else he says other than that. But yeah, like, if, I, if I may advocate for my snack queen, just very quickly, mm-hmm. I think Heather is just very bad at doing drugs because this is, I, I know what happened. They were playing Dorit's bathroom because there are no cameras in there. All them bitches are sneaking into her room at three something in the morning, bright eyed and bushy tailed. All right. Because when they were on the couch and Lisa pointed out they were doing drugs, not a one of them blinked. Not no one, one of them tried, tried to shed a fake tear. Now, what I will say is, Bad on Heather's friends for bringing in a woman who didn't know what she was doing and didn't show her the right way. I, And I'm not saying that this may or may not have happened in my own real life, but when you are bending over that toilet tank to get, you can miss the angle. And if a cabinet is over said hypothetical toilet mm-hmm. tank, and you in your in your drinks in your cups because you know they were drinking the brown liquor. You could miss a corner. This is like the most believable story of all of the stories of I have heard. Story that's that actually makes out. sense. Like it actually makes sense. And, but the part that annoys me, I will give her. The, I will give her this because she does have daughters in high school, one in college, and I will. I will absolutely believe. I don't want my daughters to see this, and that got away from her. Yeah, and that's and I, the I only thing that. I will let her get away with. But like, she ahead, said but on I the reunion about that afterwards. El, go ahead, please. Sorry, she said on the reunion that she was embarrassed and she didn't want to say like, "Oh, I got too drunk," right? And so, to your daughter point, and you're, you know, you're going to be watching this back. I understand that. The part that makes me scratch my head is. If you were embarrassed and if there was a contract with Airbnb and you couldn't say anything, why she? Why didn't she hit Andy with them when Andy asked her, or why didn't you talk or whatever? Why didn't she say like, you know why? There was no allusion at that reunion to the fact that she was stifled or silenced. Mm-hmm. And she sat there and like, poured her heart out like okay I was drunk I just didn't want to be perceived like that there was no hinting towards anything else therefore it makes me feel like she's trying to benefit off of dragging this story out because it's like every time we talk to you first it was oh it'll be in the book not one word of it in the book then it was oh I was embarrassed okay cool well before that it was like oh we all know what happens then it was oh I was embarrassed okay great now it's died down the season is done we're not talking about it anymore and to get people to keep coming to your book signing you want to say oh I was silenced like okay Megan Markle mm-hmm. now right, why, you why you got to bring in Megan like that no, we're my cousin in this. <laughs> I really feel no. that there's something important that um 
needs to be said about what Heather said at the reunion. And, you know, far be it for me to take away a woman's feelings, um, a person's feelings. And if she literally and legitimately felt embarrassed and that it was her fault, what happened to her. And therefore she wanted to find out. She didn't want to find out. She said that. And he said, it's not worth the shame spiral you're putting yourself through. You know, that's an experience that's, that's real share it with us, but there is a level of responsibility here that she is a mother with teenage daughters, that she is kind of hold, held herself out as a role model for people from her community who have left her community and that you're going to leave it at that, that it's okay, whatever happened to you, that you're embarrassed to even find, you don't deserve to know about it because you were incapacitated on whatever, drunk, Dorit's bathroom, ketamine, every, she told us everyone knows what special K is. She made that clear. So I just want to know why that's all right. Like for, I, you know, before, um, Earlier, you had a um, the amount of you had a um, video about how you just can't believe anything that comes out of her mouth. You had another another issue, another disparity because it is true. What Kristen said, you can't believe a word she says, and it's. I want to know why is this not even worse? I've already asked this of Mark. Why is this not even worse than what Robin did? Just wondering. Yeah. No, I agree, and I wanted to add add to this so to the Heather of all. Um, she mentioned that I had a video because I was watching it and Heather was talking about how she holds Whitney to a higher standard so she can't forgive Whitney, but she holds Jen to a lower standard so she can forgive Jen over and over and over for doing horrible things because she doesn't hold them to the same standard, which makes, you no. Know, I understand I hold you to a higher standard so you hurt me deeper, I get that, but I hold you to a higher standard so I can't forgive you for one thing but I can forgive this other person who has done that and worse repeatedly. And so like, for me, it's, it's hard. The only thing and the only way I've sort of like been able to mentally accept the gymnastics that she's doing is by telling myself that while we're all calling them friends and she's using the word friend, she really sees Jenna as a coworker. So like, if I had a coworker who was going to jail for fraud, I'd be like, that's rough. Like, I'm never going to, I'm not going to never talk to them again. Cause I don't really care that much. Like whatever. Um, if they, when they come out, if they're in the cubicle next to me, Hey, but like, I would never take it as personally as I would if a friend committed fraud and things like that. So even like the crap talking about me, if my friend crap talked about me on television like in general, but especially like on television, that hurts me to the core. And I don't know if I can be friends with you anymore. But if this person who I think is a coworker on the same show as me, where we have allies and people are against, if they talk crap about me, I'm human, I'm going to be pissed, but I'm also going to get over it because it's not that deep to me. I don't really care about her. I'm so here. the way that I can rationalize it is that Heather doesn't really think of Jen as a friend the way we think of when we say friend. I mean, she didn't give her any money what what like like really honestly like if we all stop and think about it how has heather actually been a good friend to jen other than saying she is okay with continuing to talk to her which is just great tv optics you get all of team jen on your side all of team jen instantly on your side and but i wouldn't I be think surprised that because if she have a there was a plot with whitney i right. think and i think heather yep yes yeah she fell off the wagon and i think heather's uh, unwillingness to forgive her is also, and I said this in a video too, is also Heather protecting Whitney to a certain degree. It's mm. like, I'm not going to get on this camera and say, now girl, you knew we sat here and talked about this and we planned all of this out. I'm not going to do that on TV, but I am going to say like, no, I can't forgive you, but no, I won't. I won't explain myself. Now, also, if you run with that same conspiracy that her, uh, Meredith, and Whitney had a theory, right? And then Lisa jumps ship and you know Meredith blows in the wind from the optics of how this show works. Who else is in your corner? Because we know it ain't Lisa Barlow, which only leaves Jen. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. now in order to side with Jen, production is like, listen, you have to make this story make sense mm -hmm. to yep. some degree. And then the answer to making it make sense is... That's my friend. I support my yep. friend. Yep. And yep. we don't have to explain it because it's my friend. Yeah. When in reality, it's like, girl, wasn't it's nobody else on well, and I also, And I also think that Heather lies. Like Kristen just said, like Robin just said, like all of you have just said, Heather lies. And I don't think we realize it as much until we are able to see it in the camera and see it in the back. And once you realize, because the thing is, and I say this all the time, um, 
nobody like lying is second nature. You don't ever teach a child how to lie from childhood. You teach them how not to lie. We all have to actively work to not lie. So, and that's why even like into your teens, kids are still telling a bunch of lies and you become an adult and you learn to work through that uncomfortable feeling and tell the truth. But there are still people out there who give into the base need and the base urge to lie. And I feel like those people are okay for giving other liars because they're like, hey, I do it too. Versus those of us who have worked past being liars and we want to lie to protect ourselves, but we force ourselves to tell the truth anyways. We can't stand being around liars. We can't stand dealing with liars. Like Jen irritates me to a serious level because it's so annoying having someone you cannot believe anything they say. Right. Like it's like she lies so bad. So like to me, I feel like because Heather knows that she's a liar too, of course she's fine forgiving Jen for lying because she knows I lie too. Um, Martin and Kristen. Well, no, what I was going to say is, to piggyback on that for a second, though, is I think what really (laughs) happened here was that after the second season reunion, the four of them, Jen, Whitney, Heather, and, and Meredith, all got together and said, you know what? We're going to make Lisa's life hell next year. And what happened was is they got a, a, a little bit of a plan that when they were going, when they get on camera, they're going to start talking about rumors of affairs and run that run that train down and take Lisa Barlow down. This was meant to be the Lisa Barlow takedown season. But what happened was is in Arizona, when Whitney had too much liquor, She blurted it out and she told Lisa at that table, Meredith told me and Meredith, you notice Meredith's mouth did not open once. And Heather flipped out because not only did Whitney hijack Heather's storyline with the, with the abuse, she also just ruined the big plan and she was mad. And so that's why she got, she got physical with Whitney, not once, but twice lied her butt off and see, but this is what happens when you fall in with a bad crowd. You know, Jen allowed Heather to be a badder person because she thought Jen's criminality was going to hide her misdoings a little bit better than what it did. And then what happened was is when San Diego hit and everybody was sat at a table and compared notes and every bad thing came back to Heather. So Heather is wondering why Heather's in this mess. Look in the mirror, honey. But what happened to the, remember preseason, we got footage that Heather and maybe it was Lisa Barlow, I don't remember, but they were like outside of, of um, Mary's church. Like there was, a, we got a lot more preseason taping I, that we never saw in the show. I can tell you what happened with that. And the, the name is Jenny Noon. Yeah. Okay. When oh, Jenny had all that footage out. Yeah. Now that all that footage took place right after the Jenny debacle hit. So all that footage and all that storyline had to be scrapped. We lost a lot of storyline. Oh, so like it's my lot lot of of oh, As the person who spearheaded the petition to get Jenny going. Good job, yeah. Al. Good job, Al. Uh, Kristen, what were you going to say earlier? When we were talking oh, about um, our favorite liar. Well, yeah, here's the thing. Like, when they planned the takedown, allegedly, because you know, when they planned the takedown, I think that when Whitney got drunk and started spilling the beans about at the game and, you know, like Meredith told me that, like she dropped little breadcrumbs that it was everybody else and I was the receiver. And that she really, I don't want to say she wanted to make clear, but at the same time, that really was what happened. It could have been the group discussion. This is what we're going to do. But at the end of the day, Whitney kind of just sat there and took the information like, oh, when Meredith came over at the beach. Yeah, well, I I heard she's doing this. Wait, what? Oh, really? Here comes Heather. I heard she was. Oh, yeah, she was doing this for games at the, you know, seat at, at the game. Like, so I think, you know, she was down with the storyline. And as she went through her genuine healing journey 
things didn't feel right. Yeah, that makes sense. When you start to now mix we dragging things. it genuine healing yeah. journey. I, now look. Well, we'll get back. We'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. Listen, that's her storyline. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that's the the S A healing journey. We hear you. Okay. <laughs> um, Nella, did you have something to say as well? I feel like I saw your hand up when we were talking about Heather. Oh, I, 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 I. <laughs> it, it. I guess I just want to say one one last thing about my last thing about Heather is because I like everybody else. I really did enjoy her, but going back to why is it that um. He forgives Jen because she, in, in a different way than she won't forgive it, Whitney, because Jen is her March of Dimes friend. Let's not even fool ourselves into thinking mm. that Heather did not raise, was raised with some serious white supremacist racist bullshit being fed to her by the Book of Mormon. Let's not Girl. pretend that. Let's not Girl. pretend that Mormonism didn't allow Black people in until the 70s. Let's not pretend that. So let's not also pretend that Heather loved calling Jen gangsta all the time. And when white people use that word without the R, they think they're really doing something. Mm. That's, that's so the other she, word they can use without the R. So she doesn't, she doesn't feel the need to forgive Jen in the same way because she doesn't even see Jen as a same human in mm. the same You reached on today, didn't you? Listen, I feel like Yo, you I feel like that that you just gave us a believable in our... story. You gave us a believable Jen story. Like, I... Hey, hey, listen, it is the right line. line. Is and hey, I bro, am like... here for it. Can I say for the record, actually, I never cared for now. I, I feel Heather, me either. This season has been I wonderful. Never, me, me, either. Like, me either. I told you so. I told you also. That I kind yeah, of was I, like I, that I like too. That. And I, I don't was... like I almost feel bad like piling on her at this point publicly because it's like it's so bad. But it's I crazy. always understood why Lisa didn't want to mess with her because she there was something it wasn't weird yeah. yeah. thank you and everybody it felt like everyone was buying the bs mm -hmm. and like there are parts of her i don't think she's a horrible person there are parts of her that i got that i was like oh she's so logical compared to this and she's so that but there was also very much a side of her that i found that was nasty and manipulative and she was really good at covering it up like the way how she masterfully turned every situation where she was wrong into her being a victim at that reunion like all season. Season your PR person because like you literally said it and then in like such a way where it almost makes us the asshole for still calling you out because you would align it with something that was such a real issue and a real problem and not to say that that doesn't impact you but you were using that as an excuse for like everything so then it's like oh well we're an asshole if we call out the fact that you say you feel shame about this thing that you though dragged on forever and made lots of indication towards and then also like robin said now you're pretending like it's so shameful you don't really want to know the truth because you you said you deserve what happened like what do you think that reads to other victims i was mad at it when you were trying to make it spin like it was maybe a domestic violent like a violence issue because domestic violence is serious to me and there are real victims of that and so for you to like lay it on that one you're just hinting, but it's not really that. And now you're hinting that it may be something else and someone like hit you or did something to you with the scratches, but you don't deserve, like you're speaking so much to so many victims in a nonchalantly way because it gets you out of feeling bad to the point where now it's an Airbnb issue and you couldn't tell because of oh. Airbnb and the contract, yet you said you wanted an investigation, then you said you're glad there wasn't an investigation. Like, it's just amazing how she was able to spin that. But and there was an and manipulative. But there was an investigation, as we found out at the reunion, a very costly one. And Andy was not too thrilled about that. He's like another don't worry damn about HR. NBC's pennies. NBC, do not worry about their pennies. I hope it cost them a lot I'm of money. I'm not worrying money. about their pennies, honey. But, but it's a I'm lot of HR is... cases coming out of every single season of the Housewives. Like if every single season wraps with an HR investigation, at some look. point, NBC is going to be like, wait a minute. But Heather disappointed me because I, I did drink the Kool-Aid. I liked her at first. And I was like, listen, this is a businesswoman. This is a single mom with four kids. She's doing it like she's holding people accountable. She's speaking her truth. And there's so many people that suffer religious trauma. Um, What was it, Elizabeth Varga over at OC? Like we got into it a little bit there. Like I 
understand that. You know what I mean? But where she started to lost me, lose me, excuse me, is where it started to come across as remember Beverly Hills when Rena started, hey, Kim doesn't look good. There might be something oh, yeah. there. And it started off so genuine, like, hey, do you have a sponsor? Do you da 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 da? But at the point in which somebody says, I don't want to talk about something, whether it's their sobriety or any other subject, you're the asshole if you keep talking about if it. You keep and talking that's, about it. <laughs> that's what Heather was giving me. It was giving me early season, season Rena, which then left me like, okay. where is this going to go? Where is this cast going to go? Can I ask, though, did everybody catch and this was something that bothered me is that when they, when they were moving through Heather's package with Whitney and she goes, I was writing the book at the same time, all this was going down. And so it really affected my behavior through the whole season. So basically she's blaming writing the book is going to excuse every bad behavior that she did. And I had a real problem with everything. Have a oh, real no, problem. No, but you know, every season, there's an excuse for something. Like, I just left the church. Um, My dad passed. Exactly. It's there's always an excuse for something. So it's already been set up that next season, I'm losing my friend. Right. Yeah, I oh, bet yeah. you she's going to have an, she's either going to be sad next season about losing a friend or she's going to have an epiphany about how horrible and how she shouldn't support Jen. And now she's seen the light. It, well, it's going to be the it's going to be the one emancipation of a Heather Gay. That's what that's what she's going to try to make this. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, honey, I'm not letting you out of lockdown just yet because your egregious behavior on and off this show has left a trail of hurt that I don't think she realizes what she's done, yeah. or she does, and she's tr- she's trying to spin it now, and it's pissing me off. Yeah, Let's go to her point before. Oh, she put her hands on Whitney more than once in a way yeah. that if you put your hands on me like that, it's not okay. Yeah. And Whitney tried to call yeah, it out and she just yeah. blew it off. She th- That is like a physical manifestation of how she projects and is defensive. She doesn't want to answer questions. Ever. If it really gets down to it. It's what you said. She turns into a victim, but then she also turns into um a perpetrator for lack of a better term right now yeah Um, because it's it's just it's just always I've never seen her take accountability right not just not about anything this season anyway not with Jen the way she acted at the table when um Angie K started calling out certain things Mm -hmm. it's just deflection like like I've never and the only time she kind of takes accountability is when she's got to say I'm sorry but I'm a victim because blah blah blah. that's the only time she seems to um Stephanie what were you gonna say I, I feel like Heather has been able to get away with this from since season one because Lisa did start with her when she was like, you know, what was it, the little flash thing? And so we were, well, I was like, okay, what's Lisa's problem? And, but then I, like, I, I still have my eyes on Heather, but I felt like a lot of the fans were like, okay, Lisa has a problem with Heather, then Heather's the victim. And so she like carried that, <laughs> like all the way to that reunion and then made, Lisa like the bad guy she's evil Mm -hmm. and then she was able to carry that to the second season and she just would not let it go and that's when I was like okay like I don't like Lisa but like Heather like enough and she just is able to like string it along and I think I'm glad that it was finally exposed that Mm -hmm. she strings this victimhood along every chance that she can get and like I feel like they were finally like enough like, mm-hmm. I think Whitney was on board because she didn't like Lisa either. So it was like easier for Whitney to be on board with it. But then at some point she was just like, okay, now you're roughing me up and you're still trying to be the victim. Like I've had enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I- I'm just glad that she's finally being exposed. No, and I agree. And I think that that was what it was for me. Cause I was like, I wanted to like Heather, like I said, she's rational. You know, like you guys said, she's a career woman. She has the kids. Um, but like for me, even like in the beginning, I remember like the first episode where like Lisa said hi, but then she's like, she didn't really say hi to me enough. And I was like, girl, like, how are you? How old are you? Like, this is like a big thing. And she kept mentioning this, but then I specifically remember, and it's so stupid, but that thumbs up conversation, the way she sat there and told Lisa that she was making it up, that she was exaggerating, that it was all in Lisa's head. If Lisa took it as an insult, it was just a thumbs up. It doesn't mean anything. Then she got on camera and snickered. 
and said, of course it meant fuck you. Of course it did. Like, I was like, so you literally just literally, if anyone wants to know what gaslighting looks like, that was literal gaslighting. You just gaslit Lisa, then got on camera and smirked about how you did it and how that's okay. That's when I was like, I can't ride with Heather. Like, I see you. I see you for it's who you chapter are. Chapter four in the passive aggressive white wood handbook. <laughs> it is chapter four. But I do feel like, and I don't want to like hone on Heather forever, but I do feel like what I felt in that moment, everybody else is now feeling like, oh, I see you for who you are. So congratulations, welcome to the party, y'all. Um, <laughs> so let's jump, let's jump reunion couches. We were on that side. We'll come back to Meredith. Let's go over to Whitney, because honestly, even though Whitney was kind of like the catalyst for a lot of it, I don't really feel like there was a lot to talk about with Whitney. Um, obviously, her abuse is, is a big deal and her de dealing with that. And I commend her for talking about that on camera, because that's a hard thing um just for anyone to go through and I think that for some for some people I think that there are like my brain is very good at blocking out trauma like even like last year was one of like the worst years of my life I've had in a long time and even now as I think back to it it's like getting darker and darker like it's fading out like my brain is like let's protect you um but I think that some of us have times or things in our lives where like we feel a tickle of it like we know like Maybe there's something it's there, like there. maybe a bad thing happened, but like, I don't want to know. Like, I just, I'd rather, oh, where what Heather was pretending like she was with her eye into that. We're really like, we don't want to know because we don't want to deal with that. And I think that it takes a lot to be like, okay, I'm going to confront it. Like, I'm going to turn around and stare the monster in the face and deal with whatever comes from that. So I really commend her for that. Um, I think she could have went about it a little differently with the cast. So I want to know your opinions on that and what you guys think. I think um, healing is just that ing. There's no ed to it. There's no such thing as done. It's a forever journey. With that in mind, to do it with cameras in your face actively while knowing that it's getting ready to air to millions of people is also commendable and a great job. Where Heather lost me, and maybe I'm lost because she's just not in that chapter of her healing, but where I'm lost is... At some point at this big age, we have Wait, to Heather, say, Heather or Whitney, I'm sorry, Whitney. Um, wh what we have to say is like, okay, I've been through something. I'm healing that something, but that something is not an excuse for me to be an asshole or malicious or a brat or anything other than a person he trying to heal to other people. And that's where she lost me. I felt like she would always do like little shitty things and then quite like Lisa be like oh that one time like that was a big deal like this you were an asshole like I know you're healing and I respect that journey this particular thing is not okay and the two aren't synonymous and and that's where but like I said maybe she also didn't get to that chapter in therapy so like who am I <laughs> well the the thing I want to point out here and I will say I've spoken to her just peripherally and she she even confirmed a little bit of it on one of my posts. This was something that was so far back in her mind, but it was certain things like her going to the restroom, her going to the any place that was small triggered some sort of weird feeling in her. And she went to a, a psychiatrist or something of that nature. And they did what's called regression therapy. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. And that's where it came from. They regressed her through hypnosis or some sort of deep trance thing. And they uncovered a lot of bad things. It wasn't just Whitney. It was her stepbrother and it was her stepsister as well. It wasn't just her, her half brother and half sister. It wasn't just her. It was all three of them. Whatever happened, it, it, was, it was bad. And the fact that she did explain it in a sober manner the night before this drunken ramble happened and you saw heather's face when whitney told them and heather just looks at her and she, you could see it was like oh pardon my french fuck you she's like you like you're gonna come in here and you're gonna steal my storyline there goes the story so heather was already mad and so Whitney didn't even have a chance. 
to get her footing because the next day she was off to see her half brother and sister and hit it hit head on. So Whitney was not in a good headspace that weekend in Arizona anyway. So the fact that she drunkenly blurted out to, you know, to Lisa, everything, it was bad. And to be honest, Whitney and Whitney and Lisa did not have the best relationship anyway. Okay. Everything was, I, I always kind of got the feeling that everything with Lisa Barlow hangs on the thread. If your name wasn't Meredith Marks, you're all hanging on a thread. And, it's very transactional. And, and I think that what happened was is that Whitney realized, oh my God, if she can discount my feelings about this, they're going to turn on me next. And so she blurted it out. That's why she did it like that. She didn't mean to make it messy. And like Whitney said on that couch, she goes, I wish I hadn't done it drunk. And, but she doesn't say she regrets turning and doing the right thing, even though it was a little late in the game, at least she did it. I definitely agree. And I think that part of, and we can talk about Lisa a little bit more later, but I think part of why Lisa forgives Whitney so easily is that, you know, someone said like, oh, it's, it's transactional friendships with her. I do think she has people in her life who have a deeper friendship, kind of like what we were saying, like Heather probably feels for, for Whitney. And then I do think she has people in her life who she knows that they're surface friendships. So like, if they talk crap, it's like, as long as you can admit it, like her thing clearly is like, don't lie about her. Don't tell lies and don't make up stories about her. But if you can admit it, she knows she talks crap too. She even said it like when, when Meredith would try to call her out for stuff, Lisa would be like, yes, and we all say stuff. Like I can just admit I say stuff too so I can forgive you versus you being able to say you say stuff too and being super mad at me for saying stuff as if you didn't say stuff. Um, if you don't say anything. Right. Like so, I, can't, I can't imagine being friends with someone for 10 years. And not who's it? Oh my God, just just getting on my nerves. And I'm sure I am. I I am a a lot to you know deal with once you get to know me. Like I can be very, um, for lack of a better term, self-centered. Like I know me. Like it is not intentional. I get in my bubble, and I'm in my bubble. And to others, it can seem very, just very nasty. No, I'm just in my bubble. And sometimes you got to poke me. Don't forget about your friends. We love and support you. Do the same. So when you have a genuine relationship with people, I feel that you should be able to have those kinds of, unfortunately, you know, awkward conversations. But I think, I don't know if the cameras really affected their friendship because Lisa and Meredith were friends for years. Like, years and here comes this effing show right like wasn't she friends with Angie Harrington for years supposedly she was friends with Angie Harrington for years too yeah but Angie screwed her over by trying to use a lie about her to get on the show so of course she's like I don't want to be friends with you again um because and they still won't admit it I don't know that she would take her back if she did but I think you know in circling back to Whitney um who we were talking about I think she was able to forgive Whitney because It's not as deep for her. And because Whitney was able to say, here's what happened. Like, and I think that should Heather finally decide she wants to cross over to being team Lisa as an ally, um, which will of course be a strategic move on her. I think she's suddenly going to admit that, oh yeah, I was in on it too. Oh yeah. I was like the stuff she's denying with Whitney right now that no, I didn't. I would never, I blah, blah, blah. (laughs) She'll admit it when she's ready to, because it's true. I think the thing with Lisa and Whitney, though, for like, if you look at the other side of that coin is, first of all, is as much as Lisa comes off like, oh, baby, gorgeous. And I eat fast food. You have to think I've been friends with my friend since 14. I'll be 33 in March. Okay, camera or not, there is no way that you could pay me to say half of the stuff that Lisa said about Meredith. True or not, you could not, you couldn't pay me any amount of money. Even if the friendship was over, I'd be like, look, bro, you go left, I'm gonna go right. Don't come back around here no more. By the way, and- um, re- really quick, I don't remember, were they drinking that night? Like, was she drinking that night? 
Yeah, they were drinking okay. that night. But you, even on the drunkest of days, now you might catch a hot mic of me talking to her, like, bitch, like, what the fuck? You know this nigga? Like, you know what I mean? But you never are going to get me about it. And I think that's very telling of who she is. I also think that that was a little mm-hmm. bit strategic on Whitney's part, drunk or not, sitting there like, listen, this story isn't playing out how we want it to play out. I've already seen Lisa bad side. If I get even more on the bad side, this could be bad. And then you've got Heather who was like, wait a minute, you just jumped shit, but you're in on it. And I don't know how to bring that evidence out. Like, uh, I'm a victim too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where yeah, do you go from jealous. there? Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I feel like I want to know how much of Whitney's part did she tell Lisa because mm-hmm. Lisa's like oh she told me and we moved on like, but what did she really tell but you what because did I she tell like you Whitney when she was talking to Meredith it wasn't mm-hmm. just Meredith telling her stuff Whitney yeah. was like oh I heard right. extra stuff yeah and that's why Meredith was like wait a minute like when they were all confronting Lisa Meredith was like wait a minute like you told me stuff so why mm-hmm. are you trying to put it all on us But I get that she was drunk, but I I feel like Whitney's being very strategic with that whole, I'm blurting it all out so I can help Lisa and And you guys are all wrong. She's also the major breadwinner now, so. And we all know that saying, in vino veritas, there is truth in one. Mm-hmm. That's and I a good to... point, Kristen. She's the breadwinner now. You move yeah, different is. when you need the show versus when you just want to be on the show. And we've seen yeah, that across right. every Everyone. franchise. Yeah. Every franchise. Like, I can't even imagine what Whitney's going to be getting into this upcoming season. <laughs> right, because she has to. No, and I do think, and, the, and I love that you bring up the point too, Stephanie, of Meredith, because I want to cross over to the other couch and discuss her as well because it was really oh so scary. we're done dealing with Whitney we're done oh no her. unless no if you have oh no more. okay because I'm good because quite I, frankly I fast forwarded all of her scenes right there's not so much I couldn't talk even about with Whitney. I am I'm done with her Helen journey there we're was not much to her. talk about it so I was ready to move on are we Moving done with her Helen um Meredith I, praise, is, I hope so Mark I hope so like in the most respectful way Bravo no. just isn't the place for the it's trauma yeah and, and but she knew that right she brought her dad on season one and that didn't go well for her and that that's was why her the healing yeah. journey story pisses me off the way that it pisses me off I believe yeah. that she went through something mm-hmm. I believe that she's trying oh, to heal too. what she went through you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. but I believe she's also trying to profit off of it and when yeah. you have trauma oh, well, like you saw that company, you saw the new company she just opened right i'm Healing sure it's crystals. related to that but Could moving you on from, i just Thank to move you. on from whitney because the, whitney is done um i did want to talk about though in relation um to the whitney and meredith and how you know meredith brought on those conversations what i saw from meredith which was disappointing because I liked Meredith from season one. I thought she was very rational. I liked her her viewpoints on things just as like a show person. And I feel like the way I was gloating for the people who knew about Heather, I feel like the Meredith people, I get their gloat towards me because they're like, duh, bitch, of course she's this way. Um, you see Nella, her face, because she knew. But I was like, oh, no, Meredith is, is cool as whatever. But what I'm getting from her, and I recently watched the old episode of New York, is like early days Bethany. Um, the only problem is that we're we are alert to the game now because we already went through it with Bethany. So when you do things like, did you hear that someone said this rumor about this person? Of course it's not true, but I can't believe they said it. We, old days, the first run through with this was like, oh, she was just saying something because she's concerned. She wasn't trying to start it. Now we get exactly what you're doing, which is bringing it up on camera so that other people talk about it while you get to say, but I said it wasn't true. So why can you be mad at me? And like, that's what she was doing. That's what she's been doing. And so when she tries to say like, I didn't say horrible things about Lisa. I was just saying what I heard. Like you purposely brought them out. You purposely went digging for stuff. You're trying to pretend like you were trying to mend stuff by following with the words, but I don't believe it's true, but you still opened your mouth to say it. So clearly you're still a problem, but you don't want us to believe that you're the problem. That's it's how I feel about Meredith this season. It's literally cartoon reverse psychology. Yeah. No, please give no. us the rest of your opinion on Nella. Or I'm it's a tool to a song. It's me. I, it's I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's that easy. But it's it's top. She tried to give us her. She tried to give us her best 
Chris Jenner, I'm going to produce this story, right? And she did it all season. And I think what we saw from Meredith was her, mm, does the audience like this? No, okay, take it back. Does the audience like this? No, okay, okay, take it back. And the biggest one that a, a lot of people don't touch on because of the topic that they don't want to is the scene with her sister and her nephew at the house. Hmm. I think that that scene was produced in order to try and gain sympathy from the audience to get them to see her as a, a human and then be her family as some, someone who goes with through something. Right. And the part, and I tried to make a video about this and a few people came for me, so I deleted it. But the part that stood out the most to me was Meredith could have came on here said, hey, here's what happened with my nephew. Here's my family. We're doing this. And, and the truth would have stood, right? Life is hard for everybody. A lot of people don't feel like they want to be here most days in the climate of the world, especially life since the pandemic, right? No. Instead, Meredith, because she didn't say it with her sister, Meredith got in her confessionals and told us a story about her nephew's attempted suicide that didn't match any other story that we ever got from Meredith. It didn't land with the audience. And now we don't see Meredith doing any work for people who are considering unaliving themselves or who deal with any mental health issues. Where's the work? You did one charity event for one scene, hoping that we would catch on to it. And, and oh my gosh, she's such a philanthropic human. And it didn't give what you thought it was going to give. And now that's done. I bet you will never see her sister or the nephew again. And it won't be out of respect for their mental health. Mm -hmm. I have to well, speak I, on that a little bit because yeah. oh no go ahead Stephanie I'll oh, go no, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say I have to speak on that a little bit because I do talk about mental health and mental illness so much and I know that it's it's hard to really judge how someone shares their story on a topic like that so I in that particular instance gave her grace that they were just trying to share that story trying to bring light to a topic that is very hard for a lot of people to talk about um and so I do think that it was made in an effort to make her look good, but I do also think that it was to bring awareness about that that topic um, for the sake of others. I mean, I think in the back of her mind, she knew it would make her look good. I don't think that that was fully the intent of it. Um, I Though I did not like how, well, I can't say I didn't like, okay, so when they were talking about the Jen thing at the reunion, and Meredith was like, I can't, you know, if somebody's down, if somebody's alone, I, I root for the underdog, blah, blah, blah. Like that was her answering. And then everyone was like, yeah, because it doesn't really make sense. Like she's not, is is a criminal. Like I wrote on someone's post, I'm like, this isn't Lay Miz. Like Jen didn't steal food for her poor starving family. Like she did stuff to get rich. Like why was she the underdog? And I feel like because it didn't have the reaction that it had, then when she came back later in that episode and they were talking about it, she's like, well, I heard about what she had tried to do. And so that's why I won't, you know, kick somebody when they're down. But like, weren't you already showing you were on her side before you heard that? And the way she explained it, I actually totally understand. If I knew that someone was going through this horrible thing and that they were on the brink and that there were millions of people saying horrible things about them, even though they deserved it, I would be okay being like, I'm not going to pile on you also while everyone else is kicking you while you're down. I'm not going to pile on you. I would not, though, be going on TV and making excuses for them, saying things like, oh, she poured the drink on her as a joke. Ha ha. Like, that's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to pile on you, but I'm not going to excuse your, your nonsense, because even if you were in that bad place, you have a long history of that beha bad behavior. It's not new bad behavior. So I'm not going to pile on you, but I'm not going to pretend like what you did is okay because it's not. And Meredith is definitely acting like what she did was okay because of that. Now, so that's my issue with her, bringing that, bringing that subject the, up. The problem I have with Meredith Marks as a whole is she's contradicting herself at every turn. Last season, was she or was she not in that bathtub for three and a half hours joyously bathing the sins of Jen Shah away off her skin before Mary came in and got her up out of that damn tub. And was she or was she not the same woman that said at that dinner that same night, if Jen is anywhere near me, I want nothing to do with her. And she stole from my store. She terrorized my family. I want nothing to do with Jennifer Shah. 
how in the hell do you get to where you are sitting on that couch this last reunion? I always root for the underdog. I Don't forget, I'm going to give the snowflake uh, necklace to Discovery so that that can go as part of um, the, pay, oh. the, the payback. Don't forget that. Oh, I forgot about the snowflake. Thank you. Not, not the snowflake, snowflake necklace. Back. But no, but she's sitting on that couch saying, I always root for the underdog. And I know that with what I saw, I didn't want to push her any further. Bull crap. What it was is your best girlfriend had a moment. She humiliated you on TV because she probably told a bunch of truths in that rant. And you got mad, allegedly. We have to put that in there, allegedly. And Let's she say was two truths and, and a lie. Mad. Yes. And she was hot mad. And she goes, you know what? These women do not like you, Lisa. I'm going to get right in the bed with these women and we're going to take you down. And then when Whitney flipped, oh, crap. I'm stuck with Jen too. So you had to ride that Jen Shaw Express train to the reunion, whether you wanted to or not. And you're going to have to die on your sword just a little bit. And hopefully next season, people will forget you did that. I won't. No. No. Because and when I, Whitney I have flipped, to everybody's storyline changed. And there she was producing. Yeah. I feel like uh, Meredith didn't know how to come into the season being the villain. And I feel like she needed to fully step into it. Now, when yeah, Lisa, had she just owned it like a yeah. Kenya Moore, she'd have been great. It would have been great. I was waiting for that. Lisa ripped her family to shred. And it was like right after a, an argument that she had with Mary. So it didn't even make any sense to me. She was pissed at Mary and went off on a tirade on Lisa. So if I was Meredith, I would have been pissed, rightfully so. So I feel like she wanted to come into the season to get back at Lisa, but she didn't step fully into it. She should have been like, yes, I'm saying this. And what? You ripped my family to shreds. I'm ripping you to shreds. What are you going to do about it? And I'm going to hang out with all these people who can't stand you. And what? What are you going to do about it? And then she could have been, it would have made more sense as to why she was hanging out with Jen because nobody believed it. She could have been like, I put my beef aside with <laughs> Jen so we could come after Lisa. And that would have made so much more sense to me if she had just been honest about it and she had stepped into the villain role, ripped Lisa to shreds, and I would have been fully on her team. But the fact that she was playing hide and seek, oh, and it's really not me, and no, I'm just going to be, uh, I'm forgiving Jen after she humiliated my son. Oh, I'm forgiving Jen, and I'm going to be on her side and forget the victims. It's all about Jen. Girl, bye. <laughs> that is <laughs> just no, didn't make are. sense. <laughs> You are so right. And like, and I'm admittedly T and Lisa, but if she had come in and owned her villain, I can appreciate a good villain. I can still like my people and still appreciate some good villain antics. Um, and so if she had come in like that, I'd be like, oh, that's so messy, but thank you for the entertainment. It's when she tries to like insult our intelligence, like we really think all the BS she's trying to feed us is real. That's when we're like, we can't say mark her down. But if she would own being a that's villain, what we, I'm saying. like we have a history of liking the villains. People will not care. Your Jen doesn't pretend like she's a saint. People know she's awful and they still like her. Trust me. People would still like Meredith if she would own the fact. And even people like Lisa us, Rinna, like right. girl, you would have been like who are like friend, friends of Lisa. We can still acknowledge that that hot mic moment was rough from a good yeah. friend to hear that it was rough. And I probably would be a bitch to my friend if they said something like that against me too so if she had come in like yeah i'm still pissed at her and yeah that's why i'm doing this i would have been like i don't blame you has she just owned thing. it just own uh -huh. it just but own the it. problem like, Lisa, is just own it. is that each and every single one of these women walked into this season thinking they were the righteous victim of someone else's malfeasance and they and would the not fan favorite but Yes, everybody thought they were the fan favorite for all sorts of reasons. So nobody would have ever taken on the mantle of villain because nobody really thought they were, even though we all know they are. Well, and, and again, going was. back, well, no. <laughs> but going well, back to the whole Jen the situation, fun. who knows what was really happening at the beginning of the season? Who knows yeah. what conversations happened? Mark, Mark, they telling you what they want to tell you. 
they are telling you what they want to tell you. So had it not been the Jenny for it all, I think we would have gotten a much more complete picture of, I, I agree. Of, what, I agree. of what real conversations had happened in the beginning to, that was about we're going to take people down. Because here's the thing. There, we are not dealing with any geniuses in this crowd. Nobody on this cast would be would be in like Mission Impossible or nothing. They're all <laughs> dumb. All right. Can we just be very clear? They are all stupid. Like, and I do not like using that word because my mom told me at a very young age, it's an insult to call somebody stupid because you mean it when you call somebody stupid, but they are stupid. Acting smart. And it's not working. Can we just agree that, that when you especially I'm uh, sorry, Robin. I was just gonna say I don't even know that they're. I would especially say that they're stupid. I don't think they're stupid. I think the problem is that they think they're smarter than they are. Like I think that they think they can outsmart all of us, and they can't. And then it's very obvious. So then they end up looking like they're stupid because we see clear through what they're doing. Yeah, I also think psychology. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you stupid. I just meant you're not smart. <laughs> well. Do we I also agree think- that when you are going to try and take someone down in a season, you're going to elevate them to become the fan favorite? It happened on Potomac with Candace. They're not producers for a reason. That's not what they're hired for. So when they go this route, like mm-hmm. take it back to what Jill tried to do with Bethany. It didn't work. It has to be an authentic argument. And the reason why people were heated last season when Lisa had her hot mic moment is because that was real and it was nasty. And then there were some people who could have maybe understood how behind closed doors to yourself, you might just lose your temper. And I'm not saying maybe that I would do that, but I definitely have done that before. And maybe I'm a bad friend. I don't think I am. I just privately need to rant sometimes. Yeah. And I think that a lot Can of people- Can you be human? Like, oh, a lot of people are related please. to that with, yeah. with Lisa. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm, for me, it's never about, what did you do? <laughs> you did something wrong. It's what are we going to do about it now? And the fact that Meredith could never say, like you said, Stephanie, like she could never just say, well, I did say that about the SEC filing. She's like, I might have mentioned it in passing. My toddler might have mentioned it. Well, right. I didn't say anything, but like, uh, no, don't give me that. What yeah. I think happened was, is Meredith was trying to almost LVP herself through this season. Mm-hmm. And it, unfortunately, she's no LVP. And I mean, he was no, really anyone. LVP. People saw through her too. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, but. Uh, at least LVP had some smoothness to her. Meredith was like, well, like you know, like how they have roads that are have like potholes in it. Going on, going on a journey with Meredith Marks was going through potholes. Mm-hmm. And- but that's what I'm saying. She's like trying to self produce. When it doesn't work, she's like, oh, LVP faltered too. I just lost my brother. I'm going to bring my family and we're going to pull at these heartstrings. Ooh. Yeah, I know that's it- right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was like, ma'am, do you know we could see? And but the, the and thing I that mean, bothered said, me, it just it never works. They all try to do it, and it never works. And you think they would learn? Does. It never works. And that whoever you go against then becomes the actual victim, and we all see it, and we side with them. Meredith came it's, into the season with all of us on her side, even those of us who uh, stuff. We got where she was coming from because I do say I I'm like um, Robin a little bit. I know Al before you said like there's nothing that anyone could do to make me say that about a friend. Um, the funny thing is. Even in my drunkest moments, I probably wouldn't say that to a friend, but would I in my room be like, this fucking bitch, this blah, 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 like, just because that's my ranting, I know better than to say it to them, but would I say it in general because I'm mad? Absolutely. Like, I'm more likely to be caught in a hot mic moment like that than I would be saying something to someone. So for me, I was like, oh, I get it. But even with that, I was still like, I'm still team Meredith. If Meredith is pissed, she has every right to be. So Meredith, right. if she hadn't tried to self-produce this season and had just been honest about her feelings and honest about her actions, we would have still been all team Meredith. Like, but we saw what happened. Would we though? I'll because that here's the thing. From my, from my husband, I'd be like, you know this girl that done fucked all, half of Bartow County and got the nasty woman disease that she can't <laughs> yeah, watch yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. But like, that's, you know, that's once the lights go out and stuff. You say yeah. that stuff where can't nobody, yeah. hey, turn yeah, the phone off. I'm single and live alone to my walls. <laughs> but the thing is also, did Lisa lie? Lisa didn't 
lie. I mean, my family just never yeah, the husband does oh, like, oh, job. They don't she did, go to she did say that it she was she allegedly takes it back. New York. <laughs> yeah, but okay. I mean, she talked about her kids too, and yeah. I feel like that would, for me, light a fire in me. To, Absolutely, like, vicious. Yeah. Uh-uh, no, I, adult like, children I, on TV who signed waivers to be there. We can part, talk no, as no, much no, no, fucking no, shit no, about those no, no, kids. No, no. As I'm not saying that's no, 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 no. I'm not saying that they're off limits, but for me, okay. if you talk about my kids, I'm coming right. after you, and there's no if, ands, yeah. or buts or exactly. That's what I'm person. saying. We would have all got it. Like we were with you, Meredith. Yeah. Now, um, you were saying um that nobody really wanted to be the villain of the season. That's part of the problem, but that's also why Donna was so refreshing. Um. I want to talk about the friends of who I'm sad that Donna's not coming back. I could take her leave the other. Like Angie had good moments, but I can take her leave her. But I really liked Donna. I can take her um, leave Especially the when she explained why she was so upset at the reunion. Because I was fine with her being upset just as what we saw. But then her explaining even more of why she was upset both times. Like I'm like, I like the reasoning for what makes her upset and I believe her. So I wish she was coming back. Well, let's just, but how do you well, guys feel about the, the, the friends? Mark, go ahead. I I love Donna, but let's just be honest. The reason they brought Dana on the show is because Dana had some inside team. She probably told production, I know this guy and this guy, and they checked and he does work for Jen. And they were like, oh, hell, we're going to bring you in and we're going to get you to San Diego. No matter what we do, somehow we're going to get you there. And production produced that moment of Meredith getting her to San Diego because they wanted her to say at that table, I have a friend that's an informant and they told me that they're dropping a dime on you. And that set Jen off. That was, that was what she was brought in for mission achieved, freaked Jen out. And then they didn't have a use for her after that moment. That part that part she didn't fit and i think this was the um the proof of the mistake of bringing jen back this season like i know andy and bravo wanted the cameras to watch this play out but this situation was so big and it it sucked all the air out of the room that once you get to this person up to, against the wall to the point where they say, I can't talk about that, or we're looking at the cameras like cut, or now we know if we say this, lawyers are going to be pulling this, then it's like, where, where do you go from this? It's like, okay, you want to take down someone who already stole me? Like it's people on the Hulu docs crying their eyes out. Like, like what more embarrassment, yeah. m- more like there's got to be somebody else like I'm sorry big baby Davis like big baby Davis was at the party you're telling me this man ain't got no friends no girlfriends no nothing that we could have put on this cast we had to watch Jen sit up here and use all of her mother's retirement money only to get Dana's moment of saying like oh you better be lucky to put some something on the books and then that's too far we filmed the whole season it's been to hell with all the victims Meredith talking about she care about people mental health but she friends with her and she flying out and all of this and it's it, one particular lady lives in a one bedroom home with her four kids now because she done gave Jen $80,000. You feel what I'm saying? It's people who aren't here anymore who passed away from the stress of all of this. And Wait now this heifer throwing out somebody else's luxury shoes across the yacht. The fucking so nerve has no respect. The nerve. And you, I was your shoes came from DH Gate. Audacity. You done stole these people money to go to DH gate and get these shimmery bags and stuff. Gucci don't even, LV don't even make that holographic bag. Like, listen, you and your Canal Street products is just like, like the nerve of you to throw a charcuterie board. Replace it. Can you afford a charcuterie? Do you know how expensive Swiss cheese is? No, and I'm not talking about, you know, the grocery store, $14.99 at the produce section when you pick it up. I'm talking about gourmet bitch. Like, what are you doing? I'm I'm very I'm sorry I take my charcuterie not the Mars Capone like I know we not throwing Mars Capone (laughs) wait a minute the brie with the honey drizzle over top and like hello you know the Bravo docket you guys I think most of us know who the Bravo docket is right Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. you know they broke down every law that Jen broke during the (laughs) during that San Diego during that episode yeah yeah shot yeah it was a lot. 
starting with simple assault pouring the drink like mm-hmm. uh, reckless touching littering yeah. uh, it was that. bad I just don't understand. Of grand theft I just don't understand how people can be friends with Jen other than in the context that I mentioned earlier where this is for a show um, and so I don't really think of her as an actual friend because there's no way I could think of someone in my life who I know has no problem bold face lying to my face. I truly, to the deepest parts of my heart and soul, do not understand how you can be friends with somebody who you know has no problems looking you directly in the eye and telling you a lie. Because how do you talk about the anything? Fact that how do you, I do not, not have a mortgage on that? my house. Like I don't understand how you have a relationship with that. I really, truly don't. And so there, the fact, and then also to see them do things like throw someone's shoes overboard and be like, oh, oh, like, it's fine. Like, it's okay. And then lie about it and know that she would do shit like that to you and lie about it. I, just, I you know mm-hmm. what? I love myself too much. I love myself and my mental health too much to deal with somebody who would F with my mind like that, who I would have to constantly second guess myself. Like, am I like, are they lying? Are they telling the truth? Am I just reading too much? Like, it's too much of a mind fuck to deal with somebody like that. I could not be friends with Like, who like has that. the time to play mental gymnastics like that? Like, is what you're saying truthful? Energy. Is it not? No? Okay, stop talking yeah. to me. What about that whole part that Dana covered in the reunion about how Jen came for her husband. I'm sorry, when you start with the names like that, knowing how Jen is, like that is coming for him. I don't know if it wasn't on camera or not, but I, I, I just don't understand. It seems, and I'm not saying they are, but it seems like they did make an effort to protect her to a certain extent, because how bad can she be? Remember Leanne Locken when she went off? I mean, that was just really ugly. It was nasty. They just, you know, cut her completely. And they were still trying to hold on to Jen for the reunion, you know? So um, I don't know. It's a little weird. And let's just not forget that the reason that we know that anybody gave Jen shot money is because Heather told us. But, but... Andy likes Jen, and I don't know what's there. Andy did an episode of Radio Andy, right? And he was, he, this man, first of all, I think we've all known the housewives and Andy long enough to know when they're actually bullshitting us. Like the whole thing may be a lie, but we know when the slip actually shows. And Andy said, Oh, all of y'all are asking me, is Jen fired? Is Jen fired? Well, she's going to jail. And this man literally starts on the pot on his radio show yelling, like, I don't understand what more you want from me. She's going to jail. Da, 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 da. And it's like, sir, you're in the business of recording and profiting off of people's criminal activities. Hello, Teresa and Joe. What we're looking for you to say is we won't be making a special out of her going in and coming out. And I think you know damn well that that's what we're looking for. Oh, if but she, if you not that, saying that, not, that's what we want him makes to me say. think it's coming. Exactly. If he could do it, we absolutely we must, would do it. The same thing. But he uh, can't because it's coming. Chris, you're frozen all <laughs> it's happening. Right. No, but and see, that's the thing. It's coming and uh, 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 she was going to record. Like, that's why at court, she said, her lawyer said what they said. I am an employee. Like, I have a job. At the end of the day, she says, I have a job. I have never been fired. Bravo has made it very clear that they did not fire her. They just uninvited her to BravoCon. Like, the wording right now is very, very specific. She, please, like, understand she will be featured those first, like, two episodes. Like, we can look to see Jen for at least two episodes because she has three days of filming. What's that? Six hours a day. Mm -hmm. So she has three days before she gets locked up. So we're going to see her prepare and get her things in order and go to jail. Then Heather's storyline will be, oh, I I, I know, I know. I am saying awful, awful things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm you're saying right. Shit. I just don't want to watch her do that. I mean, I'll <laughs> right. watch her in jail and see what goes on behind bars, and then they can get all the proceeds to her. Oh, I would love to see uh, yeah, I mean, uh, behind bars see. lock up. Why they're not love gonna after lock up? Take the wig Jen edition. No, I want that perp walk. I want that perp you know, walk. I want to oh. see them take that Gucci. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry, I do that's feel Gucci like that you meant to say. That's Gucci. <laughs> 
I feel like we're in a time now, unfortunately, where everyone knows that, like, listen, either way, you're going to have fans. You really, truly are. And the best thing to do and the positive I take out of this is to be yourself. Because no matter what, there will be people who don't like you. If you try to be a saint, there will be people who don't like you. If you try to be the devil, there will be people who don't like you. So rather than trying to fit into a certain crowd, be who you are and you will find people who like you and who don't like you. Now, for people who want to be famous, they know to lean a little bit into one direction, but know that no matter which direction they lean, they're going to get fans. So Jen doesn't have to try to be a saint. She knows that enough people will like her for being fabulous and wonderful. And we see it even with her not apologizing, with her not seeming to care. People will forgive whatever you do if they are a fan of you. And especially if they think you're living some luxurious life that they wish they were living and blah, blah, blah. And they can make any excuses. Or if they, they think that you can put them on. Or or that like they will forgive you for whatever so there isn't really the incentive there used to be in the past to be a good person like I mean I would like to think we all have that incentive anyways but there was before where people on tv for the most part tried to be likable be good good people and there's none of that now anymore there's no they get fans anyway just remember the old saying the most celebrated are the rehabilitated that part. And Everyone loves a comeback story. Everyone loves a comeback story. But I think the problem with Bravo is obviously as every other business, they follow trends and analytics, right? But mm -hmm. what happens is when Tamara uh, Judge becomes the first one one to throw a drink and then those numbers spike and now everybody's talking about it when Teresa flips a table and those numbers spike and everybody's talking about it Monique so on and so forth and yeah. we know Bravo is the king of repeating a trope i.e the conversation with uh Dorit Kyle Maurice and PK they are trying to repeat and recreate in hopes to get to these numbers but what they find is the only thing that gets them to these numbers is this dark toxic shit and it's just yeah. because it's like we're not entertained we're triggered so we're all like trauma bonding <laughs> yep <laughs> no you're right you're right I, and it's a I, no i will uh, just as quick just little sideline as an example miami has not gotten to that level of darkness or despair and they have been just off on all cylinders because and that's season. why people are loving them they feel real they feel authentic there's a little bit of like producing with certain people, but it doesn't feel like Salt Lake City where it feels like the whole cast is trying to produce the four different shows and they haven't come, they haven't gotten together to have a meeting about which storyline they're running with. And it just feels like a big, hot, fake mess. Um, with Miami, it still feels authentic. Their fights feel real, they're getting over it, they're being mad. And I think that's what people are looking for. So I know that for next year, if Salt Lake yeah, City comes it's back, too I'm humid and hot out there for them to actually try to plan. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's too much. Yeah. It. No. Well, I hope that, you know, the Salt Lake City crowd hears the feedback of the people, knows that we want them to be like real and authentic and like light, light, let life happens. That's what we want to see. You don't need to make up stuff. You're all mad enough at each other. You'll fight. Just live life. Stop trying to make a story and just let life unfold and we'll get a story that we enjoy. Um, anyone else have any final words? No I more Seth. No, no more Seth. No, Stop no more trying tape. to make the no SLC husbands happen. No more tub scenes. No more sexy scenes. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing worse than people that are bad at sex trying to be sexy. Like, please. <laughs> I don't even see any Mormons no or more. Utahians or whatever they're called. No, no. more sexy time in Utah. Like, mm -mm. I don't need to see no ball patches. We was like, snowy. Mm -mm. No, no, I want it. <laughs> Well, you can take well, sexy well. away. Take sexy away. Thank I, you. I, yeah, no. take sexy back. Well, thank Ooh, you all okay, so, so much for joining me and for sharing, giving us some scoop, Mark, giving us your opinion all else. Stephanie, Kristen, Robin, Nala, I appreciate it. I love any time you get to chat. Mm -hmm. The next group one is going to be uh, Potomac. So that will be look for your invites if you want to come back and talk about that. Uh, this week I released an episode called Bravo Should Be Fun where we had a conversation about like has Bravo become toxic or has we always dealt with serious topics. So check that out. That has been uploaded and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Baby you just kick your feet up while I kick back. I roll one with you by my side.